baited aspect as well. And who has the edge in this aspect really comes down to can Itachi destroy the nucleus of the Chibaku Tensei. Uh, but what's your take on this? If you want to start yeah. this part. Yeah, this is a tough one, man, because, you know, Itachi is obviously a genius, right? He's going to utilize what resources he has available to make the best out of the situation at hand. He discussed it with Naruto, knowing that he already dealt with the situation, like, hey, can you provide some quick incel so I don't have to use what time we have to try to do this on my own, essentially. And so talking to Naruto gave him some intel, but he also deduces by himself that like he needs the three of them uh, in conjunction with their strongest AP attacks, that are being the um, Tail Beast Bombs and then the Yasaga Beads from uh, Itachi to eclipse the amount of traction. The frenzy has begun. That the black hole can emit from <coughs> Nagato at that point. So I think based off the empirical evidence that we do have, albeit small. Oh yeah, Tachi, he's smart, bro. He's not dumb, you know what I mean? Cause he knows. Like we, we got we got it. Like if we're being humble and transparent, right? And we're not being biased or taking or being weird or anything, right? Or, or applying favoritism. Atachi knew if he just charged head on at Nagato, that would not work. It would either stalemate and get nowhere, or he would be getting the Naruto and Killer B treatment, right? So he had to strategize and plan, and then was able to successfully blitz Nagato. You gotta give Atachi credit, regardless if you think it's a bitch move or not. It's fair, right? <laughs> I would say that in conjunction, the three then that's why Kabuto sucks dick. Utilize your abilities <laughs> to deal with the threat at hand, essentially. But there is also interpretations that like it was just a smart thing to do, right? And that could be yeah. very uh, rational as well to say. So yeah. yeah. So uh, this was another thing me and Shinobi disagreed on, um, specifically in our debate as well. Um, so this is what I'll say about the AP. So clearly, the single and only moment we had to extrapolate from was his altercation. Without a Nagato as an Edo himself, Itachi constructs a plan along with Naruto and Killer B to all throw their most powerful long distance ninjutsu in an attempt to destroy the Chibaku Tensei, which succeeded. Many reiterate the premise that because Itachi asked Naruto and B for help, he can't destroy Bro, the Chibaku Tensei. That, that's what fucking Kakashi had to do. Kakashi had to do the same shit. Use Shadow Clones and Substitution and Stealth in order to even have a chance against Pain. He knew better to charge him. He knew! <laughs> Oh. It's a corn zone. Now this premise, however, he even, he even did it against Kakuzu, bro, and Kakuzu did the same to Kakashi. What argues an appeal to ignorance because we never see Tachi attempt to destroy a Chibaku Tensei on his own, so there is no way to conclude on the answer to this question. So with that, mm -hmm. along with the fact that we never see Tachi push to his limits as a Shinobi, forcing him to use his highest AP ninjutsu in a one-on-one -on -one encounter. His AP classification is unquantifiable, objectively speaking. Hence, unfortunately, we can only simply educatively induce, if you will, who would have the AP advantage between Itachi and Nagato. Now, to be fair, I'll say this. Excluding the Chibaku Tensei question, truthfully, from my subjective lens, I would conclude that Nagato has higher AP, as we've seen him accomplish feats from blowing off Jiraiya's arm to leveling an entire village. While conversely, we just never see Itachi accomplish any high AP feats, yeah. which also allows us to imply he doesn't depend on his AP most of the time, but rather his finesse and ability to create illusion. So as far as the Chibako Tensei argument, I just deem it as inconclusive. Um, I think there's arguments for both sides. You could say that, that him asking for help and saying he needs help would allow you to imply that he can't destroy it on his own, but while conversely, like I just said, you can argue that's an appeal to ignorance, and there's an argument that he can because we never see him in that actual sort of event where you have to actually attempt to destroy it on his own. So it's unfortunately another extremely ambiguous aspect to uh, this whole topic that's that we are currently discussing. Right? Itachi does he have the AP to deal with something of that magnitude? Because if he doesn't, he will die. Right? He'll be pulled into it, and he will be eliminated by the force of all the rubble and all the rocks coming to the nucleus of the Chewbacca Tensei. So that is an important question you have to ask yourself because that would certainly be a win con and a very high likelihood win con if Itachi can't destroy it. But yeah, did you want any add anything to that, to the AP discussion? Itachi's very tactical. You know, like, doing yeah. like these socket beats might be detrimental because Uchiha's aren't really known for having, like, an abundance of, like, chakra, like the um, Uzumaki clan, per se. But... Yeah. It's the finesse. It's like the ultimate Genjutsu. It's all these abilities he can utilize that would be more quick and efficient that would enable him to win the battle safely because his illness is really, it's very much so a thing. So at least in his alive iteration, it probably wouldn't be wise to do that off rip, right? 
but especially when it has sticky yummy things like that so it's just um it's very inconclusive because of the uh, limited extra extrapolation that we can have from this yeah. tiny window of a battle that we saw so yeah exactly it's very similar to the speed aspect we just discussed it's just a very minuscule and minimal amount of empirical evidence or mm -hmm. datums if you will to make any extrapolations from it's just a single altercation a single Chibaku Tensei was released and executed and a single destruction event took place where he had help I mean it's it, besides that we have nothing besides mm -hmm. our pure speculation our own subjective lenses which can come to different deductions and conclusions and it's as simple as that so there are certainly several interpretations which can be at odds with each other that are valid as simple as that and again you guys let us know what you think about that I mean we gave our conclusions on it like our actual conclusions at the beginning then we gave several other interpretations and you know, we simply just informed what's likely or not what's likely but what's possible so that's that um, now we want to just quickly discuss the narrative representation of this battle the way it's illustrated by Kishimoto if you will now clearly this altercation was illustrated in a way to make Itachi be the hero of the story if you will he saves Naruto and B from Nagato and then swiftly seals him, which implies his likely superiority amongst the group of Shinobi. And again, just by the way it's illustrated with Naruto and Killer B about moments away from death and Itachi coming in, literally swooping in, saving them, and then, you know, devising the plan to destroy Chibaku Tensei and then sealing Nagato. Kishimoto more than likely intended him to be the hero and he literally goes on to stop the reanimation jutsu after that being the only guy that can with the Izanami. The way that this is illustrated just indicates his superiority amongst the shinobi. But yeah, that would be my interpretation of it. What do you think about how this was narratively re represented? I agree, bro. You know, yeah. like... Itachi was such a huge plot twist in the whole series. Like, the whole time he's meant to be portrayed as, like, this, like, evil brother and, like, did all the things out of spite. Uh, uh, I wish we could have saw them fight more instead of Nagato just rushing into Jabarka Tensei, but it did make sense. Kabuto wanted to use Jabarka Tensei right away. He wanted to capture Naruto and see him in, uh... B before Obito does. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kabuto was desperate, dude. He was desperate. Yeah, absolutely. I, but in reality... Yeah, once they finalize on this AP stuff, or, like, whatever, whatever they're about to say, I'm gonna give my take on the AP thing really, just really quick and short and concise, um, and then we'll continue on. ...really helped Kona at the end of the day, and he really did that by unlocking the secret towards reversing Edo Tensei with the uh, Shisui's ability in Kodo, stopping Kabuto's Edo uh, Tensei army with the Izanami, like, he was the hero at the end of the day, and if he died to Nagato, none of that would have happened, and the story yeah. would have been completely different, so he had to find a way to win. And I have no disagreements with it whatsoever, but it was just necessary for the narrative to flow as smooth and fluid as it did so yeah um, i think that definitely yeah I, I brought up that argument before as well i mean plot convenience like i said if it was the other way around and it was a nagato against evil itachi right along with, Nar with killer b and naruto nagato probably would have won then if it was kishimoto writing you know what i mean that's a fair argument you know as some believe. especially once again because if kabuto's dumbass is the one behind the wheel controlling itachi and it's not itachi then you could even argue Atachi's going to be out of character, you know what I mean, and just basically bloodlust and trying to utilize his abilities, but not using his abilities in an in-character sense, meaning aka Atachi being stealthy, analyzing, etc., you name it, right? So, if anything, Kabuto will probably try to use Atachi to charge head on, you know, right, with his abilities, or Susano is, like, all over, and then Nagato's like, bitch, I'll fuck you up, Chewbacca Tensei, whatever, yada yada, you know? <laughs> so... Uh, I, mean, I always forget about my nickname and password on, uh, on Twitch. In terms of like representation in that regard, because Itachi had to do what he did to make the story progress. So yeah, yeah, very important. So the two possible conclusions that are at odds with each other, they contradict each other is the one for the pro Itachi side would say he was illustrated in a way to be the hero that implies his superiority. That's one interpretation that's valid. The other one is the only reason he beat Nagato was because of convenient plot storytelling and it's a yep. plot device, if you will, that could even be classified as like a duus ex machina, which is just like an unlikely event that takes place for the sake of the plot. I think that's possibly valid. Um, it's possibly valid, um, but I could argue against that and just say, well, he had several encounters with Nagato, the first blitz, the Chewbacca Tensei and then the ceiling um, but I would, regardless I would say that that interpretation is somewhat valid as well both again it, these interpretations are contradict each other but they're both valid which just further illuminates ambiguity and contentiousness so there is one more aspect worth discussion before we get to conclusions I'm doing good man I'm doing good felt had to be addressed and uh -oh. that of course is the Genjutsu aspect so is the Renegon 
And All right, now they're getting the Genjutsu. Cool. That's more simple to digest, to be honest, at least for me. Um, so I'll say the, the really quick for AP. So basically, at the end of the day, the way it works, if you want to argue in favor for Nagato, you can say Nagato has more chakra, he has more stamina, and that's just blatantly a fact, right? Um, Itachi utilizes very goaded chakra control like Akashi, Sasuke, Obito, etc., right? That's why he's just so powerful, even though he has very small stamina and chakra. And to be fair, technically, he has a lot as well, but nowhere near to people like Nar Naruto, Nagato, Madara, Hashirama, you name it, right? Or even Minato, right? Um, but either way, um, that's kind of what you're working with. And with those variables, on top of it, with uh, Nagato using Chibago Tensu, or at least Kabuto even thinking that would be a win con, you know what I mean? Even against someone like Itachi, okay? You know, could substantiate further why Nagato's AP is more than likely greater. And just at least... At least objectively speaking, right? Not subjectively, but objectively speaking, what we at least have seen and do know, bare minimum, it did take all three of them to destroy it. That's just what we have, right? You know what I mean? If we're talking objectively, it, it is in favor for Nagato. Even throughout the whole story, he just shows way more greater power, right? Rip and dry his arm off, like they said, you name it. The village, yada, 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 you name it. Atachi's always been shown to utilize hacks or finesse, or just, you know, intelligence, and that's why he always comes out on top. You know what I mean? He's not being shown to be like Madara and just slicing mountains and yada yada, you name it, right? So, that's kind of basically the way to think about it. You know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Um, and, and that's all you have, you know? And, and that's it, you know? And, and it makes sense, because even when we see Itachi's interaction with Naruto, right? They're going both for both, whatever, right? They're equal. And then we see, or relative, however you want to take that. Then we see Nagato, and he's just shitting on them shitting on them able to restrain them with the robotic machinery slamming them with shinra tenseis able to subdue naruto in speed blitz with the chameleon you name it right so at the end of the day you know objectively speaking it does favor nagato but subjectively you can still have plenty of argumentation and argue the higher possibility of why that's irrelevant yada yada you name it and say why itachi should still be superior or you know or just concede and that's it right and then you could just argue for itachi well he has the automir and the automir is stated to be able to do anything right <laughs> like so meaning the shield touches the chibaka tensei cancels it right yeah everyone lives you know what i mean but what's hard about that is if itachi could have done that okay then why didn't he just say that or why didn't he just do that right why would he just try to have a whole teamwork situation whatever yada 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 but you could also argue against that to where Itachi was trying to teach Naruto and Killer B teamwork and yada yada. And just to be like a leadership type moment example, kind of like how Kakashi is with Team 7, you know what I mean? And he even has a full on like speech and morality like talk to Naruto about, hey, use your comrades, teamwork's a dream work, dream work, don't try to do everything on your own type vibes, right? So you have that line of narrative consistency. So at the end of the day, it's just, it's super contentious, you know? So... Genjutsu. Well, when looking at the canonical literature, empirically, there is actually more to conclude that the Renegon is not immune to visual Genjutsu. We see Obuto and Kakashi put each other in Genjutsu, and we see Jiraiya, along with Ma and Pa, catching three of the six passive pain in an auditory Genjutsu, further reinforcing the premise that the passive pain are susceptible to being caught in Genjutsu in general. So if the Renegon is not immune to Genjutsu, then how would something like Tsukuyomi affect the passive pain in Nagato specifically? Um, what do you think about this, Shinobi? How would that affect them? Something like the Tsukuyomi. Yeah, so first off, I just want to say, like, Sasuke's Renegon is not equivalent to Nagato's at all. I mean, yeah. that's like a Rinne Sharingan that could, yeah, it could deflect the infinite Tsukuyomi, but it's not analogous whatsoever. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, though, because, like, we see on multiple occasions with, like, this, like, Genjutsu battle or, like, trickery, if you will. It's like a game of chess, you know? There's Kakashi saying, oh, enough of these, like, Genjutsu games. It's like a, uh, they're just trying to, like, invoke emotion from one another, you know, making Kakashi see Rin and Orin and making him, like, stab her and, like, just to invoke that, like, anguish that he's felt for so long, right? Fucking mute it. God damn it. Um, anyways, what I was saying is I'm going to let him uh, speak first and go through the whole Genjutsu first. And then I'll respond and give my thoughts and play devil's advocate for both. Or just substantiate further what they said. Instead of like going point by point. Just to make the video go quicker. 
And uh, with Itachi yeah. and Sasuke, like, they're just playing, like, a Genjutsu game, like, the whole chair. It's a constant, like, battle of, like, who's superior in Genjutsu, even though we know Itachi is, right? Especially yeah, Tsukiyomi. So, it's very interesting because that's all we really have to extrapolate from. And it seems like, I agree, that the Renegon is not immune to all Genjutsu. Like, the Frog song, it's auditory. So, at the very least, you can say it is susceptible towards that. And... In the data book, it's actually stated to be the strongest Genjutsu, although I think it's kind of uh, interpretive, but nonetheless, yeah, it's, a, it's a very... I'm just gonna leave my mic unmuted. Uh, quick thing on that. Um, what's going Yeah, that's that's not even the case. The, the the Frog Song is stated to be the strongest Genjutsu. Infinite Tsukiyomi is stated to be the strongest Genjutsu. And Koto Matsukami is stated to be the strongest Genjutsu. So... In order to have a simple and like dissection of what all that means, because obviously that's a contradiction, right? Not all of them can be the strongest. That makes no sense, right? Well, hear me out. So, uh, the frog song is like they said. It's audio, right? It's not visual. It's audio. It's not dojutsu re related or anything. It's just using sage one nature energy and putting it into your body and combining with your chakra and using a sound genjutsu, just like what the flute girl did in the part one Naruto. So, meaning, out of, like, all sound genjutsu, even including the flute chick, it would be the strongest genjutsu. And if you really, really wanted to rat, since technically when Kabuto uses the flute genjutsu and it's not stated to be superior or nothing, whatever, blah, blah, you could rat and say, therefore, dry is, but you could easily debunk that and substantiate why Kabuto's uh, sound genjutsu would be superior. But either way, okay... You know, that's what you have for that. And then for uh, Koda Matsukami, that would just be talking about out of all MS, right? Even though that's contentious and you can still advocate for uh, either Itachi, Madara, or Obito, whatever, right? For your, whatever your reasons. But you could say bare minimum from objectively speaking, right? That the Koda Matsukami is just the best MS Genjutsu, right? Out of all, right? Then you have uh, the Infinite Tsukiyomi. That would apply for any, like... Rinnegan, you know, uh, fucking Shotgun Genjutsu. So it's it's visual again, but it's not like a normal MS. It's instead six paths enhanced, and it's a Rinne Shotgun, you know? So that's, it's three different distinctions. It's three different variables in its own class, if that makes sense. That's why I think there's a consistency of why they're all three of them are said to be the strongest, because it's in its own class. I don't think it's being compared out of all of them, I think it's just separate, right? And there you go. And obviously, if we had to say, even in a general sense, obviously fucking the Infinite Tsukiyomi should be the strong. It's literally six paths enhanced by Jubi Madara, bro. You know, like, come on. So that's all we have of that. But anyways, let's let him continue, and then I'll give my thoughts on the whole Genjutsu thing, whether if it works on Nagato or not. Very strong Genjutsu, and I can see it definitely playing a part, but um, Itachi doesn't have that, right? And yeah. Itachi does say himself in part one, like, you know, you need to have, like, the same bloodline, meaning the Sharingan, Kekai Genkai, to even resist the Tsukiyomi. And obviously, Nagato has moderate highs. So it's very ambiguous because, like, you only have Kabe, you only have Obito and Kakashi really going at it with Genjutsu, per se, and they're just kind of, like, playing games. Yeah. So yeah. it's weird. Like, can they turn it off or on? It's like. You can't really say for sure. You know, yeah, yeah. The, the the question of can they voluntarily be unimmune to a Genjutsu because they choose to or not? That that's certainly ambiguous. Like, could you argue that they could literally shut off their their immunity or turn it back on, like Itachi against Sasuke or like etc. It, it's certainly ambiguous. Um, and yeah, like Shinobi said, Itachi says you need a Sharingan to defeat me. And Kakashi, when he's trying to withstand a Tsukiyomi, says it oh, only a Sharingan user could even handle this. Like it's extremely ambiguous for sure. And the the empirical pieces of evidence I presented kind of reinforce the premise that Renegons aren't immune to Genjutsu. We know for sure they're not immune to all Genjutsu. That's for sure again because the auditory one caught this three out of the six paths of pain. And again, the 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 Kakashi versus Obito fight is a possible piece of uh, evidence if you presuppose that Obito wasn't voluntarily just being susceptible to Genjutsu. Um, and I think you can argue either way, to be honest. I just think, again, from my subjective lens, I deduce that it's not immune to Genjutsu, whether auditory or visual, with the empirical pieces of evidence we do have. But again, if you believe that there is some sort of immunity, it's not an absurd take, but I do think the empirical evidence goes against you. Um, with what we do have and what you can extrapolate and 
deduce. But moving on from that, answering the question of how would the Tsukuyomi most likely affect the passive pain if we presuppose that Renegons are not immune. This is what I would say. What we do know. Uh, and uh, my bad, uh, L. Carry. I'm over here tripping. I, I'm, I'm so into the video. I appreciate the follow, by the way. You as well. Thank you so much, man. Um, and uh, Fizzy Dog, appreciate the follow as well from you, brother. You guys are going it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll try to be active as much as possible for my streams. But like I said, if you're not able to make it, or let's say you don't want to watch the stream either, all this content will be edited and posted on YouTube. Affecting the three passive pain didn't I, I need to get like a follower like notification for me So when you guys follow it like tells me <laughs> like there's a way to do that It's either I haven't unlocked that yet because I need I still need to hit a certain follower amount Or, or there's certain requirements I haven't hit yet because unfortunately that is a thing or it's something I need to figure out how to set up But my bad though guys Nagato directly but instead it seemed to Nag Nagato simply lost control of the pass with their hey, but if you haven't already done it though too, if you're gonna be goaded here, make sure to uh, subscribe to my YouTube as well, bro. If you like Naruto content, IRL, anime, Marvel, DC, you name it, I do all kinds of stuff and gaming as well. If you're into gaming, um, I have tons and tons of videos. And throughout time, I, as you know, I'm getting bigger, and also if I'm making doing more better financially in the real world, like not YouTube, but you know, my main other job. Um, I'll, I'll try to have a more productive videos for Naruto, you name it, etc. And like my own scaling videos. Um, so that'll be a thing too. So I do all kinds of stuff. So if you fuck with that type of content, make sure to check it out. If you like it, so subscribe, you name it, etc. You know, don't do it if you don't want to. You know what I mean? That's important, you know. Um, but if you do like it or enjoy what you see or, you know, this, the playlists that are on there, whether it's Naruto playlist or whatever you like, um, I hope you enjoy it. So, and there's also tons of debates, tons of entertainment. Like, hilarious, hilarious debates. So, if you like that too. Your sense is being disrupted. This indicates the high probability that the passive pain having any of their five senses. And, and oh, just a really quick thing too. Uh, what's it called? Um, you know, so you guys don't get like, you know, um, butthurt or anything or whatever. Or even potentially sensitive. And, and rightfully so, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, any of the debates where I'm like, may sound angry or whatever, or spurging or roasting, whatever, that's just for entertainment value. You know what I mean? That's not how I actually am. There's many, many debates that I have on my YouTube where it's just me being calm and collective or professional, etc. as well. So just putting that out there, the only person I've ever been a dick to was Noodles. That's the only person. And Gios, because Gios tested my patience. But other than that, you know, that's, that's it. So... I've seen D1 versus Apollo yesterday, or like 20 minutes. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I bet that was something. Disrupted wouldn't result Funny, in Nagato being affected directly, but rather him losing access to their bodies. Almost as if- Now to be fair, D1 does that shit for entertainment and does that because he that's just, that's just dead ass what he feels. Me, I just do it for entertainment. You know what I mean? Nine out of 10 times. Like it's very rare for me to dislike or hate someone. Um, Noodles is the only person I've a that I've actually had beef with. Like, he's just, unfortunately for me, I'm not trying to be a hater, but he's a very unlikable person and an unprofessional person to interact with. And many, many, many people also agree, including the GOATs, aka Swag, and et cetera, you name it. I'm not going to list names because I don't want to out people. Um, but I've had conversations, you name it. So, Noodles, he's just a ningling. He's a tubby tubby, okay? You know? If the chakra signal between him and the past and pain in question is fractured and severed by such an event. Hence, the most rational conclusion is that Itachi Shokuyami would affect the path of pain, but not Nagato directly, with again the empirical evidence we do have and what it does allow us to imply. So, what would be the best course of action to optimally exploit this vulnerability for Itachi? Well, as we know, the past of pain vary in power quite significantly based off the feats we see each accomplish respectfully, with the diva path seemingly being the most capable. Itachi having the and intellect he does would most likely deduce that himself and would hit him first with Genjutsu and with that path of pain out of the equation his chances of successfully defeating pain would increase significantly hence Genjutsu is certainly a very possible win condition for Itachi against a six pass of pain um, yeah. but what do you think how do you think Tsukuyomi specifically would affect uh, the six pass of pain uh, uh, all right, we're gonna hear out Shinobi and then we'll give our thoughts guys yeah, like you're saying, bro, when Jiraiya put the three passive pains in the auditory Genjutsu, he says, like, it's a Genjutsu that paralyzes your nerves in your mind, so... Yeah. If that was true, that it would paralyze all of their minds, and obviously the Oscar Pass when they come in and, you know, delam him, yeah. and then all that stuff that inevitably led to his, uh, unaliving, you know? So, and also there's, the, like, you know, when Ibiki, like, um, mentally, like, interrogates the animal path and pain invasion, 
there's no indication that like he's uh, gathering intel from any other path of pain as well. So you could say that like they do work. Oh, and then really pain. quick, really quick, one last pause, guys, for you guys up uh, for chat. Um, another thing too, I don't always post when I'm streaming either. Like sometimes I just do it on the low, you know, or whatever. Because like I said, I always post it on YouTube anyways. Um, and the reason why is because I don't want to like always. Be, I don't want to be a bother either or look like I'm wanting you guys always to be there or something. I do it, you know. Just, you know, because I want to do it. And it's always for you guys. But, you know, just putting that out there. I don't always, um, you know, notify or make announcements when I'm streaming either. So if you do want to uh, be aware of my, when I'm live, make sure to hit the bell as well for the notifications. Um, you know, because I don't always uh, announce it. Just an FYI. Um, until I get bigger and until I have a poll where people like say, hey, yeah, please announce when you're going live. Then I'll do that. But until I have that confirmation... Um, I kind of just do my thing, and either sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So, evidently, but to be on Itachi, I know I know you guys love the Naruto reactions, though. So that's why I did it just just as once. With this, folks, the Tsukiyomi again. It's like a name of like a deity. So even if like Pain is like a god, well, Itachi kind of has like a godly power in the Tsukiyomi. It's like yeah. constantly like referred to as like one of the most ultimate genjutsus. And so, if we do presuppose, like, he does not have immunity towards it, if Hitachi does have the intellect to just go after the Nintendo path, first and foremost, then that would be quite problematic. But again, it's situational because Nagato always does the animal pass in all of his engagements throughout the battle, at least first and foremost. So, really a question is, like, does it work? Does it not? I mean, it could go either way, to be honest, folks. And if he chooses the right one, I mean, that really helps Tachi at the end of the day. So it could go yeah, either exactly. way, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What most likely would happen is like Itachi would capture the Diva Path in Tsukuyomi, and then he would realize it's just a dead corpse that is no longer active, and he'd probably just like unrelease the jutsu. He's like, all right, well, at least Nagato can't use him anymore. He's. He's um, out of commission. But yeah, the, the chances ah, of it affecting the Nagato frog. directly are very unlikely. As again, we've seen him. We've seen passive pain caught in Genjutsu in general. And we see Nagato still able to control others, right? So again, that just reinforces the premise that he is not affected directly. And it might be, it might seem weird because his chakra network is being dispersed throughout these passive pain. But for whatever reason, it's not dispersed in a way that leaves him susceptible to being hit by Genjutsu, at least from what we've seen. I mean, we see how that interaction uh, takes place and how it transpires. So the Genjutsu uh, aspect certainly had to be discussed by us. And again, another contentious aspect that's just a common theme with this discussion and Itachi versus Pain, which just further illustrates the inevitable ambiguity when it comes to this topic. Um, you, but you guys let us know, again, when it comes to Genjutsu, how do you think that would play a factor in this battle? Do you think it'd even play a factor in the equation? Um, you guys let us know as well again. I just thought, like, what if, like, like he senses uh, Itachi's about to use it and, like, like he tries to absorb it with their fate of that or something weird like that? Like, Oh, shit. Who knows, like, what could actually happen? And it's weird because, yeah. like, Itachi doesn't use Tsukiyomi during their engagement. I really wish he did. You know what I mean? Yeah, that would have been a really good, cool thing to see, to see him caught in that, like, yeah, it, it's, it's just never transpired, so it's it's very difficult to sort of conclude and deduce how that would be illustrated. But um, yeah, that would that would be a weird uh, thing. super that weird. Would be, yeah, that, that would be a weird sort of altercation if you try to absorb it. I wonder if it's even absorbable. Um, it's gonna be very strange, actually. But yeah, so now we get to conclusions. Okay, so they're about to conclude, and then the video's done. So I'll get my thoughts on the Genjutsu. Genjutsu is really really interesting. Um, personally, if I had to really, really give my thoughts and pick a side, to me, it's, it's, it's very simple and straightforward. But if I am playing devil's advocate, okay, I'm going to explain why it's contentious and really interesting. So, for Itachi's favor, obviously, if you go along their argumentation and substantiate in that way, then there you go, right? Then if Pain could get hit by it, whatever, he's fucked. Because, unfortunately, the way Tsukiyomi works, there's no canceling that. There's no getting out of it. There, the moment you get hit by that, there's once again, there is no get out of jail free card Monopoly style, right? That's that's not how Tsukiyomi works. The reason why Tsukiyomi is so broken and it's a hacks based MS Genjutsu, it's not based upon your chakra input or, you know, how strong your scaling is with the MS, right? It's literally hacks itself. It's just like the Totsuka Blade in the Yadamir. If you get put into it, okay... You are fucked. It literally transcends space and time itself. You can manipulate everything freely. 
you, he it literally puts you in Tsukuyomi in a picosecond, okay? A fucking picosecond, bro. Who knows? Maybe even less, but what we know objectively, a picosecond. That is insane. I'm not going to uh, look that up for you guys and tell you how crazy that is. Just Google it if you're curious, whatever. But it's an insane amount of fucking time. Like, drastically, drastically faster than the speed of light. Let's put it that way, okay? So, overall, like, Tsukuyomi's no fucking joke. And then Kakashi says verbatim, and Itachi says verbatim, and Naruto says verbatim that if you are hit by the jutsu, you're done. You Like, that's it. If you get put under it, you're done, okay? Um, and the reason why is because you, it, you basically don't have the ability to defend yourself you know, or allow yourself to break out of it with chakra control, or by the time the damage is done psychologically, the person that realizes you were even hit by it to begin with, it's too late. They didn't even know and, or can't even cancel you out because there's only two ways to get out of Genjutsu. You either overpower it with your scaling or two, someone has to release you out of it, right? Whether if it's a tail beast within you or if it's, you know, your partner, right? And so that's what makes Itachi so dangerous. And even Chio was like shitting her pants because she was like, she was talking shit. She's like, oh, well, don't worry. It's easy to counter a, a, a Chia Genjutsu. And then Kakashi's like, nope, not him. He has an MS and he's the exception basically. And she's like, oh my God, what is he then? You know, like, so Itachi is no joke. If you get hit by it, you can't get out, unfortunately. It's literally time manipulation and there's no way to defend your. Uh, excuse me. There's no way to defend yourself. But that's if you get hit, all right? And if, obviously, how smart Itachi is, yes, I do agree he would do it against Tendo Pain, right? Based upon the abilities and whatnot, right? So, and that's going to be a big problem, and that would be more unfair for Itachi. Now, to go the other way to play Devil's Advocate, and along with what I generally believe why this wouldn't be a win con, or even wouldn't be possible... So if we analyze all the evidence we have in Naruto, okay, you know, or like at least to give a refutation for what they were saying for in favor for Itachi, the whole Obito to Kakashi thing, if you could just argue false equivalence. And the reason why is because oh, like like what Shinobi was saying, Obito and Kakashi are basically fucking with each other. They're trying to basically do emotional damage, yada, yada, yada. And Obito literally pulls an Itachi like what Itachi did to Sasuke. He was fucking with Kakashi. He was, you know, basically just testing him, whatever, having fun. And then the whole goal was to make Itachi stab his heart so he could break the fucking tag seal so he can't be controlled by Madara. That was the whole point, right? So basically everything that even occurs in that fight with Kakashi and Obito to begin with, Genjutsu, Ninjutsu, Taiju, whatever, all that is basically you can't even use or justify in a form of scaling, mainly because Obito is allowing it to happen to begin with. That's the first issue. Two... Along with what also Shinobi was saying, to where you could basically activate your resistance to things, and we do know that's how that that does that is a thing in Naruto. We see it when uh, um, Madara uses six pass Rinnegan Genjutsu. Sasuke says Rinnegan Genjutsu can be dealt with Rinnegan Genjutsu, and that that's why he's able to resist it and it can't affect him. So as long as you can resist the Genjutsu, you're perfectly fine, right? Now, if you get hit by it though, then you're fucked, right? But Sasuke was able to resist it. And that's also further substantiated with verbatim statements in the data books and by Itachi to where Itachi basically says, you know, if you, if that in order to beat me, Sasuke and Kakashi, um, well, not Kakashi. Uh, Kakashi was lying and misleading, whatever. Or you could even argue retcon. But to Sasuke and even by other people that you need an MS in order to beat an MS user, basically. Nine out of 10 times. Unless you like outright vastly scale you know what I mean? That's an exception. But 9 out of 10 times, you need an MS. And the reason why is because the MS is just a more powerful version of the shotting gun. It's a more stronger chakra, genjutsu, uh, precog, fucking you name it, right? And so, and it gives you hacks abilities. So, Itachi told Sasuke the whole time, not only to make him stronger, but like being dead ass, hey, you need the MS, otherwise you would not be able to beat me, right? And that was like the whole thing throughout the whole fucking narrative. And it was just blatantly true, along with Obito substantiating that truth as well with saying Natachi wouldn't back, tricking him, yada, 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 etc., right? So you have all of that, okay? And most importantly, we know that's also true because it's stated to the contrary that you can't get out of Tsukuyomi once you're hit by it. 
the only thing that is stated as to you defend yourself is if you can resist Tsukiyomi if you have an MS, right? Um, or if somehow you're cracked as a three tomo shotting gun user and can resist with three tomo somehow, I don't fucking know. But either way, the main the main point being said is you need an MS, okay? And Atachi let him out. So with all of that shit in in, conjunc in conjunction, basically you name it, we know the Renegon is a superior dojutsu than the shotting gun. So and it's visual, right? It's not vis It's not an audio genjutsu either, where it's you know you're hearing it like the flute and the frog song. That's another false equivalence. It wouldn't operate in the same sense as the frog song because it's not sound. It's visual. You have to look in the eyes. That's how Tsukiyomi works. Okay. So with the frog song, you have to hear. It. Now, if you are affected by both genjutsus, it does the same thing though. It fucks up your mind, your body, you name it, right? But in order to be put into it, is two different distinctions. One is sound, one is visual eyesight. So meaning, therefore, if Pain has a superior dojutsu, and we go along with what Sasuke's statement, you name it, etc., along with the other statements that Itachi says in trying to teach to Sasuke, along with Obito also collaborating that notion as well, therefore, you need the same dojutsu in order to resist it and not be affected by the genjutsu, right? And that's basically how it goes. Or even to break out of it. Now... Tsukiyomi is still technically an exception because let's say if some let's say somehow Itachi has a Renegon and does Tsukiyomi as well and now Pain can't resist it right it's fair game you know um whatever especially that the scaling is equal or relative whatever and he gets hit by it you're still done because the whole point of Tsukiyomi it's a hacks based Genjutsu you can't if you get hit you're done you know it's an automatic win so no matter what you know it's really really interesting it's still very contentious but I feel like there's a lot more evidence to the contrary, that it just couldn't be a win con. Um, and unfortunately, there's just no way for it to work that way. Atachi would need a, a sound visual genjutsu in order to actually give Pain a run for his money. And to our knowledge, he just doesn't have that. All his genjutsu is either visual or like using its fingers and then like putting it against you. Like you could say a finger genjutsu could probably work, right? Because it's just pointing a finger, right? Not visual. So that could probably work too. Um, what's it called? You know, and that would be very, um, actually very, very good against pain. Uh, if anything, finger is, the finger genjutsu would actually be the problem, is what I'm saying, okay? Visually wise, though, it just wouldn't be the case because he has the superior dojutsu along with everything else I already just said. So, that's kind of one way to kind of think of it. You guys take it however you want to. That's totally up to you. I don't care. Um, and not only that, it's even further established with Madara's brother, where in the data book it states Madara's brother is like, Mengekio abilities, like his hacks and abilities, was also equal to Madara. You know what I mean? Not scaling stats wise, but at least his MS to MS. Okay. So overall, like, you know, that's just kind of what you're working with. You take it however you want, but that's it. Um, let me read chat real quick and obviously I'll, I'll edit this out of uh the video. Uh both of Kog too. Uh absolutely. Um, did you see Loco has heavy Sasuke greater than Jugo, KCM with Naruto and speed? God damn! He pulling the next level noodle shit? <laughs> Come on, Loco. What you doing, bro? You de he's definitely going Loco. You know, he's, he's losing his mind. Let's say that. Because that's heavy Sasuke KCM one level. Insane, bro. Insane. 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 That's even worse than Kakuzu, in my opinion. Well, actually, mm, no, 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 I lied. To be fair, that's more believable than Kakuzu, but that that's that's crazy. That's fucking... I don't know what. That's crazy. Anyways, apparently Ebi Sasuke can fuck with Seijima Naruto and KCM Naruto now. Um, anyways, uh, I don't think Sukiyomi, uh would work on pain. The way it works is it separates the mind from the spirit. Pain is dead. And doesn't have a spirit or a working mind of his own. Uh, that is true. That is true. Now, well, to be fair, the mind I disagree with because it clearly happens with visual. Um, but a soul, you are correct. And if Tsukiyomi operates in that sense with where it, you need a soul or some shit, then I would agree. That's even, that's That makes it even harder for a Tsukiyomi to even be something to utilize. Um, now, you know, uh, I'm trying to think. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh, and then another thing, too, um, that they, they also said before I forgot, and uh, they, I think they said, uh, what was it? It was something, oh, 
Uh, another problem with it too, when Itachi fights Nagato, not once does he use try to use Tsukiyomi. Not once. And Tsukiyomi is a one-shot ability, right? Who wouldn't want to use that? Especially if you could even utilize Nagato and have him be on your side, right? You know, like, why would you not want to do that? Or just keep him out of commission, then instant Totsuka Blade, right? Tsukiyomi, then Totsuka Blade, you know? So, Itachi never does that. If anything, why did he not do that? Either probably because, for one, he can't really engage against him and you know uh in front of him two probably because it wouldn't work that's why even he knows it's the renegon right you know and you name it because in character itachi always uses Tsukiyomi. he did it to kakashi does it to sasuke he even grabs kakashi and chiputin and literally forces him to look in his eyes you know you name it the whole fucking nine so itachi always uses Tsukiyomi. he even did it against datara well actually i could be wrong about datara but anyways um he did it against sasuke when he's older he always uses Tsukiyomi, you know what I mean? So it's like, the fact that he didn't do it against Nagato, you could definitely argue even further that he just can't do it, right? And that's a good point Shinobi brought up, that it's like, if he could easily do that, or if it actually was the case, then why didn't he, right? But that's that's all you have, you know? So, um, shotting on pointing, uh, laugh a lot. Yeah, yeah, bro, W, A. Every other Genjutsu works on pain, so yeah, I don't see why a finger wouldn't work. <laughs> like, it's not visual. Like, unless I'm tripping, maybe if there's a data book and it says the finger shit is also visual as well, I don't know. I would have to double check, but I, I don't think it's visual. I think it's just normal Genjutsu that he's doing, you know? And then he could just amplify it with the shotting and meaning just make it stronger. It's, it has nothing to do with visual, you know what I mean? So, finger Genjutsu, low-key, as crazy as it sounds, could be a win con or give pain some serious problems. So... Uh, it's just stated by Itachi. That's how it works. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so yeah, but anyways, let's continue and finalize the video. So again, this video is informative, but we're gonna give a hard take on who we think wins. So we're gonna do two. We're gonna do first going to do Itachi versus a six pass of pain, and then we're going to do a hypothetical prime Itachi versus prime Nagato. So cool. we'll start out with a live Itachi versus a six pass of pain. Um, did you want to start uh, first? I'll give you take your first. Sure. So yeah, I think Pain kind of has more of an edge here, folks, just because like he has an extra set of eyes, uh, multiple set of eyes, if you will, um, not including the animal pass as well. So it would take Itachi, based on what we saw, he would most likely be able to deduce like, hey, like blinding all these guys first with the kunai might really help me out at the end of the day in a situation like is the animal is the chameleon path invisible or not like if not i mean that could really help him with that at least in that regard is the kunai even fast enough to blind all of them when he's like uninhibited by soul tugging or the killer bee who are both perfect in charities like jay mentioned so it's interesting but i think based off like just seeing like nagato be able to like do a jutsu right in front of itachi makes me say that he can't blitz him out right and if he chooses the right jutsu to utilize or implement like the shibako that's also a really that. good point that i that i'm glad uh, shinobi brought up i was actually going to mention that too there is many moments where nagato is straight up doing shit in front of Itachi. He just straight up does Chupaku Tensei in front of him. <laughs> like, the moment Itachi comes out of hiding, he, he does that. And he's, and he's like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? Like, he wasn't able to speed blitz again. If he could, he would have just done it, right? You know? Um, and then also, once again, with everything we know before, Itachi had to hide, sever the Link Vision first, analyze and watch Naruto and B get bitched, and then attack from behind in order to land a successful speed blitz. Come on, bro. All that evidence, come on, right? He's not going to be able to just do it outright in front. And most importantly, it's Kabuto behind the wheel controlling him. Kabuto's a fucking idiot, okay? I already explained all this. I'm not going to go circular, but you get what I'm saying, right? Um, and then th that's just a very good valid point from Shinobi. Very, very good, you know? So. Um, Shinra Tense or something like that. Or even Levitation, you know, for that regard. Like, there's not many Shinobi in Naruto. That is true. Pain can fly. He can fly, bro. <laughs> can even fly like that. So I just think he has a more like um, advantageous arsenal to implement. I think he has adequate speed to at least utilize Jutsus. And not to mention uh, Battle of Attrition as well. So it really comes down to like the Sikiyomi being able to hit or not. It's, it's very inconclusive in my opinion. But based off what we do have, if they were to fight one-on-one, -on -one, I think Kane would have the slight edge. 
Um, it's all situational. It all depends on what he does and what he doesn't. But yeah, I think that's what I would have to say for those two. Hopefully. All right, now. let's hear Jay. So as far as my conclusion, this is what I'll say about a live Itachi versus six passive pain. Now, what makes a safe deduction difficult to construct for this matchup is that as we all know, Itachi's health is gradually deteriorating while he is alive due to his bizarre illness. And additionally, the ambiguous difference in power of the passive pain dependent upon how far Nagato is from the passive pain. So what we can conclude rationally is that pain has a more powerful and destructive arsenal based on the empirical evidence, while Itachi, if healthy enough, most likely has a speed advantage if we presuppose my speed scaling for the Edo altercation holds. Hence, the battle really comes down to the speed discrepancy between the two. So with Itachi at his least ill and at the peak of his skill, I would conclude he defeats the six pass of pain more times than not because again, that speed discrepancy would still most likely be there. And with tools such as Genjutsu, the Tosca Blade, and Amaterasu, he would most likely systematically take out all the pass of pain over time and still most likely have the stamina to endure that battle with his illness not restricting him too much at this point in time. However, at a certain point, once he reaches a high enough arbitrary level of illness, he will be inferior as a combatant in terms of speed, and I will go as far as to say and conclude that any version of Itachi Part 1 and Beyond would most likely lose to the Six Paths of Pain more times than not. As even in part one, it's implied that even one Tsukuyomi is costly to Itachi's chakra reserves by people such as Kisame and Kakashi, which further indicates his lack of stamina here as well. So, like Shinobi said, it's certainly situational how this would take place. We obviously disagree on Itachi's best chances and how that would go, but the situation and the. Yeah, that is fair. That is fair. Regardless if he did a retcon or not, objectively speaking, at least, it. Yeah, part one, yeah scenario and context of the altercation in question will certainly greatly dictate and sway uh, the likelihood of either one winning. If Pain's in the rain village and Itachi's as sick as he was against Sasuke, then he's most likely going to lose. Itachi's, at, Itachi's near death, his stamina is depleting his health, his abilities, while conversely Pain is at the prime and peak of his powers in the rain village and he would most likely dispose of Itachi. He probably wouldn't even be fast enough to even hit the Tendo Pain, let alone defeat him. So that would be for Itachi's favor. Now if it's the pass of Pain significantly far away from Nagato and Itachi's younger and healthier and more at his peak, there's a much better argument that Itachi would win that one. All right, so it's situational for sure. That's our conclusions on that. Um, you guys let us know as well. Like we said in every other aspect, how do you think this would go? Um, so now we get to Prime Itachi versus Prime Nagato. Now the conclusion to this one differs from the previous one. In this scenario, Itachi doesn't have his illness, restricting him from his peak powers, meaning everything besides stamina is slightly above what we saw from Edo Itachi, with Edo's being slightly weaker. Um, and same goes for Nagato. Hence, the discrepancy at speed between Itachi and Nagato would once again be illustrated the way it was when we saw the altercation between Edo Itachi and Edo Nagato. Due to this, several tools in Itachi's arsenal would be viable options, such as the Genjutsu, again, the Totsuka Blade, and Amaterasu. Nagato's margin for error would actually be smaller than it would be for the Six Pass of Pain, as he would be facing Itachi directly, indicating that if he were hit by Tsukuyomi, it would hit him directly and dispose of him, as we all know. On top of the speed advantage Itachi would have here, so there's actually an argument that the Six Pass of Pain at the peak of their powers would have a better chance due to the genjutsu sort of margin for error that he would have because we established the high likelihood that nagato isn't hit directly by genjutsu when one of his passive pain are but it's certainly most likely that he would be hit directly by sukiyomi if he's facing itachi one-on-one -on -one. so i think itachi takes it either way um whether it's the six passive pain in their prime or nagato in their prime but yeah, what's your what's your take on this part? I think uh, I think Nagato definitely differs, right? Um, yeah, you know it's hard to say if Itachi would or wouldn't use Sukiyomi just based off their engagement in the war arc, but if he did use it and it did work, it would be extremely detrimental to Nagato, obviously, because it's one vessel, and there is no escaping that behind a myriad of other bodies to like help with in the disadvantaged state that you're in. Yep. Um, so if, if it does work, that's GG's, essentially. Now, it really does come down to speed, again, folks. And also Jutsu's. Like, if Itachi tries to use Amaterasu, or like a Fireball Jutsu, that can just get absorbed and just cost him chakra for no reason at all, right? So it would have to, like, resort to something like Tsukiyomi, or like Blitzing him with the Tosca Blade, that would really be advantageous. Um, the Automir could also be utilized greatly for, like, the Shinra Tensei and other abilities Nagato has. 
Um, Amaterasu can deal with like the animal pass, etc. Except for the chameleon if it's invisible, I will admit. But despite that, I think Nagato is at a disadvantage just by himself. So if we do presuppose Genjutsu does work, I see Tashi taking this kind of easily, to be honest. Yep. But if it doesn't, then, it, like, I, again, it comes down to the speed. You know, Nagato did use a jutsu right in front of him. So it's really hard for me to say. But I would say Itachi has a better time in this matchup for sure. And it can, I, I, just to be fair, I think it can go either way like, easily, like, for sure. Yeah, but, it's, it's extremely contentious. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, it's very contentious. It, it depends on your presuppositions of many factors, like such as the ones you discussed in this video. But there you guys have it. That is the Itachi versus Pain discussion and video. And, and as it has become blatantly clear to you guys, I'm sure, the topic is very contentious and ambiguous. To come to a conclusion requires analyzing this multivariate equation that leads you to these logical dead ends where you inevitably have to use a subjective lens to come to a rational conclusion. Meaning we are very aware that there are probably disagreements some of you may have with us. So please leave your thoughts in the comment section below as we would be interested in hearing your guys' thoughts whether you disagree or not. Um, but that's going to wrap it up folks and we'll see you in the next video. Stay classy y'all. Thanks guys. Oh my gosh, this is so comfortable. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was a really good video. Very, very good. I really, really enjoyed it, and I was not disappointed with the amount of time I had to invest for it. You know, that was, it's been a while since we've done a reaction that long and that controversial. It's been a while, dude. So even though it was... It was Two long reactions that we had to do for this, because I didn't want the video to be too, too long, so I had to separate it into two parts. Um, very, very good. Very, very good. Um, really, really good. They, they feel like they did Devil's Advocate perfectly. I feel like they were transparent. There was no bias. There was no bullshit, no nothing. And even when it came down to them having to give their full subjective opinion of who really takes it at the end of the day, I thought that that was also fantastic and great. You guys already heard everything from me. Um, my conclusion overall, if I had to just like give as of now with my memory, everything I know, whatever you name it, obviously this can change once I make my own scaling video one day, because I will do that eventually. Um, but as of now, okay, if it was, if let's do Sikatachi, right? Sikatachi gets beat up by Pain. I don't want to fucking hear it, okay? Um, he's still strong. He's no joke. Even Obito still de deems him of a threat, whatever you name it, yada yada. But at the end of the day, it's stamina is an issue, chakra is an issue, his sickness, MS is also fucking him up, yada yada. It's really just not fair, right? You know what I mean? Like, in pain, we'll be able to deal with anything he does, be able to, to also see when he's about to use the MS, because he can also do that in the war arc and know whenever Itachi is about to either use Tsukiyomi or Madaratsu, okay? Say it verbatim and shown. Like, overall, Nagato just has every counter for Itachi. Nagato and pain. Nagato's even harder of a slam. Uh, Paths of pains. Maybe Atachi has some relativity while sick, right? But he's gonna gas out really quick and then just get beat up and get the dry treatment, right? You know, um, and that's and that's if it's bloodlusted, right? If it's bloodlusted, Atachi's just fucked. You know, like I don't see him dealing with Chewbacca Tensei unless you argue for the Yadamir. Then there's that. But either way, overall, if it's bloodlusted, I feel like he just gets fucked, right? Um, and then that's that. You know, um, if it's in character. I think it gets even worse for Itachi because Itachi doesn't know everything about Nagato. He doesn't know everything about him. He knows pain. He knows he's the leader and he's like seen him in the hologram and shit. And I think he's even like met him once, right? But he's never seen all the passive pains. He's never seen all of them together, okay? He doesn't have the, the intel, whatever. He would have to learn that on the fly, yada, yada. He just knows he has a Renegon and he knows he is the leader, right? Or the so-called leader, technically. Um, so overall, like with all that into consideration, if Pain is in character and strategizes like he normally does, like he did in the Hidden Leaf, like he did against Shiraya and even Naruto and has a certain formation or just a strategy to put pressure on Itachi or just to not underestimate Itachi into where even if Itachi somehow came on top, then the passive pains would just get revived and then they're fighting Itachi while he's extremely fatigued or nerf. And basically gets the Toby Rama treatment, right? And at that point, Itachi loses, right? Because Pain just outsmarted him in the end. And Itachi had no way of fucking knowing he could bring these motherfuckers back to life, right? That's definitely something that could happen high possibility-wise. Pain has always done that. In character with everybody. Even with the Jiraiya, he started with the summoning path of Pain just to test and flex and try to outlast him, right? And then when Jiraiya, like, transformed to his next form... 
he probably still could have fought him and done well, but he, but just in case, to not underestimate his sensei and to just keep fucking around with him while holding back, he summoned two other passive pains and then was able to force him to concede, right? So if, if Nagato is doing anything remotely along those lines similarly, not Itachi's fault. It's not fair. He's going to get gassed out and then now having to fight while he's not even at full power. What does he do, right? So, unfortunately, for a sick Itachi, I just don't really see it. You could still argue for it, right? Still ways to do it, but I just don't see it. I feel like if we're being transparent, it's not going to be the case. And I feel like if we're even talking subjectively, high possibility-wise, it just won't be the case. You know what I mean? I think it's, it boils down in favor in Nagato and Payne's favor objectively and subjectively. And that's it, right? Um, then you have full power Payne and full power Itachi, like basically prime healthy, right? And even Nagato. So... What I, what I will say for basically for that is it ultimately goes along the lines of, you know, if you think Itachi is outright scales and it's like speed blitz tier above, right? Obviously, Itachi's going to win. He could, he could fucking, you know, finger again, you do whatever, blah, blah, you name it, or the Sotsuka Blade, yada, yada, you name it. And if you even think uh, Tsukiyomi is, can work on the Renegon, that's even worse, right? <laughs> like, so... Obviously, with all those conditions, sure, it's it's not even up for a, con a contest, right? Um, now, if you don't think Atachi is a speed blitz tier above, and you think there's at least relativity or equal, or you think it's the other way around, and Nagato's actually the more superior one, okay? All right, and and let's and we'll just talk bloodlust at first as well. At that point, that's where it's really, really interesting. It gets contentious, and it's circumstantial. It boils down to their environment. It boils down to who, how they're strategizing, whether if all passive pains are out, whether if they're not, obviously, things like that, right? So there's a lot of variables which can make the fight go in different ways. But ultimately, okay, if they're at least equal and relative, that's going to be problematic for Itachi because that means passive pains have all the abilities to counter anything he basically throws, right? And, and, and for Nagato, it's even worse, you know? Um, past the pains, Itachi at least has a better chance because he can at least, you know, if he's successful in taking past the pains down, then obviously that's one ability and the other out for the count, right? Or if he's even able to realize the the path of pain that can bring him back, Itachi's immediately going for that fucking path of pain. Immediately. With no hesitation, you know? So, like I said, it depends how it goes and how they're, they're ba basically playing chess, right? You know? And at that point, I feel like it's just more favorable and more better for Nagato because he just has way more. He technically has more intel on Itachi while Itachi doesn't have intel on him. He has more stamina and chakra to play the Outlast game too. And most importantly, like, you know, it's just, it's going to be really, really hard. Especially if it's like Nart, if it's Nagato pulling like a cheap ass fucking strategy, right? You know what I mean? Just to make sure if he does somehow lose, he can have a second chance, right? A get out of jail free card. If that's the case, that's even worse for Itachi. But if, if all passive pains are out, okay, it's still going to be really hard. Tendo can fly, bro. You know what I mean? The, 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 the summoning path of pain could be on the fucking bird, you know, the whole time, whatever. Even though, to be fair, um, Itachi has a Madaratsu, you know, and whatnot. But then again, if Itachi tries that Madaratsu, either the Tendo pain could just shit or Tensei it off, or the other path could just absorb it. You know what I mean? Like, there's, it's, it's really interesting. It's a very complex chess match, right? If it's equal stats... You know, or if you think there's some arbitrary relativity, it's going to be really hard, right? It's going to be really hard for Itachi. And to me, it's more logically safe to conclude that Nagato or Pain should just take it, right? It just makes more sense, right? Um, now, if it's Nagato and, you know, and you believe Nagato is the superior one, right? This is where I, when it comes to me having to decide, this is actually my thought process, okay? My subjective lens, um, and even from like the objective feats and statements too, but subjectively speaking, high possibility, I do think Nagato is still superior and would actually take it. And the only reason is not only based upon the statements, you know, Zetsu, whatever you name it, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Also upon mainly the war feats. That's what gets it for me. The fact that Kabuto was controlling Nagato and he was the one behind the wheel and not even Nagato in control of his body. You know what I mean? Because if it was Nagato, he'd be throwing a Chewbacca Tensei, some, spamming summonings, you name it. Doing all his shit, right? You know? Kabuto's over here like, hmm, okay, this Pokemon has Tackle and then Lightning Bolt. Let's, okay, let's do this, see what happens. Like, Kabuto is a fucking idiot. And once again, there was two modes, okay? 
There was the autopilot Edo Tensei mode, where basically they're just to follow orders, which their only orders was to capture Naruto and B, and to counter and defend any jutsu they do to them. And they were able to still have a conversation, talk, be friendly, but they're fighting them, right? Then when Kabuto gets rid of their emotions and just makes them a, a, a machine, basically, right? And just to go full out, bloodlusted, basically, Naruto and B is getting shitted on, right? <laughs> like, they're getting shitted on, you know? So, like, at the end of the day, you know, there's that as well. So if this is Nagato being in control of his body and acting in character, or at least having the ability to make the decisive choices of how to engage and fight Itachi, and he would know better than Kabuto, right? Okay, then at that point, it's like, it's it's looking really bad for Itachi because Itachi's not going to be able to engage with with him in a 1v1 setting like what Shinobi pointed out when he just does Jubaku Tensei on the fly and Itachi's just watching him and does is not able to speed blitz. To me, that further proves he can't speed blitz whenever the fuck he wants because if he could, he would have just done it right there and then, right? He literally sees him do a fucking broken... Like, Itachi is the most humble intelligent shinobi he would not bullshit or underestimate he would never let you do something that could possibly endanger or defeat him he's not going to allow that you know what i mean he's not stupid he gets straight to the point okay just like minato so when you have nagato and he's clearly able to attack itachi or be a threat to him face to face right that would blatantly show itachi can't do anything and if you also compare okay nagato and uh, to Itachi, to Casey and Naruto and Killer B performance, Nagato no dips, Itachi struggles, right? So it's like, at that point, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you have that comparison too. Um, so meaning, like what? Would Nagato just no dip Itachi as well? You know what I mean? Or would Itachi at least have some form of relativity and not get the Killer B and, and Nar Naruto treatment, right? But still mainly lose because Nagato can counter anything he does, can see when he's doing the jutsu, when the blood and chakra is being channeled in his eye, and most importantly, has Chewbacca Tensei. And if you think Nagato has greater AP and all that shit, yada, 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 you name it, Itachi's not getting out of that, unfortunately. Itachi's only shown objectively just to have hacks, finesse, intelligence, you name it. Not just raw AP and power, right? Um, or... What I would still advocate, and I think is also possible, like if this interaction actually happened and Nagato did a Chewbacca Tensei, I I do think, um, I do think Nagato, uh, not Nagato, Itachi would just use Yadamir and cancel it, you know, and that would probably cool what would happen if it was an, a fight that actually happened if Kishimoto wrote it, or if Ch Chewbacca Tensei would be the last card uh, Nagato uses or Pain uses. And because all the rocks are hitting the Susano and he's like going up in the sky, you know what I mean? He's just getting hit by all this shit because of the power and chakra infused with all that. That would pierce through the Susano, at least through the vulnerable parts, you know, or the areas that doesn't have the Automir. And Itachi gets hit and he gets killed, right? Or he would be forced to use Izanagi at least, okay? Because we do know Itachi has Izanagi, okay? And he also has Izanami as well. Um, but remember, those are also... Um, uh, Iza not, uh, those are both non-visual uh, Genjutsus as well. They're well, Technically, they're visual, but they don't require eyesight. So you could technically argue that Izanami could also be a win con for Itachi. Just putting that out there, okay? But overall, that's all the argumentation and substantiation for Nagato in favor for him. For why he could more than likely take it due to him just having superior comparison and performance against B and Naruto. Also, Itachi having to literally hide... Literally run away, okay, watch B and Naruto get beat up, strategize, hit the fuck, sever the, the Renegon's Link Vision, and that would blatantly imply and prove that he also cannot speed blitz Nagato without the Link Vision being involved. Because if there's Link Vision, whether it's for summonings or if it's from the Pass of Pains, he just can't land a hit, right? Which has just been consistently shown within the narrative from, you know, Obito using the, the Pass of Pains and even Nagato using Pass of Pains, right? So with all this shit into consideration, and even objectively showing Hitachi needing Naruto's help and Killer B's help to deal with Chewbacca Tensei, I feel like it's safe to say Nagato more than likely takes it in the bag. But once again, what the fuck do I know? It's very contentious, very controversial. That's just me if I had to pick the poss higher possibility-wise or bl subjective view. Um, unfortunately, there is tons of good evidence objectively for Hitachi subjectively for Itachi, vice versa for Pain and Nagato. So you guys let me know what you think um, in the comments down below. I'm very curious. I, I know this video is probably going to be way more longer than the first part, but it is what it is. At least we got it done in two parts, right? If I was being really nitpicky, 
I would have done three, but fuck that, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope they provided many insight. I hope they provided many arguments for both sides. And overall, I hope it was just, you know, something for you to just put into consideration, right? You know, and think about logically and just understand how much of a legendary topic and fight this would have been, right? If we actually saw it legitimately, right? Because what we saw in the war arc was kind of like a bootleg, like weird version of it, okay? So, but other than that, that's basically that. As always, guys, Batman out. Subscribe, comment, like, peace. All right, chat, we did it. Holy shit. I feel like I just ran a marathon. God damn it. The things I do for you people. Okay. Um, how would you rate the difference between Edo Nagato with Beast Chakra and regular Edo version? So it's interesting. Um, obviously, red hair is blatantly more dominant. It's blatantly. Regardless if you think it's because Nagato's power is like is finally at full power, you know what I mean? Like his body's not crippled anymore. Like his body's fully healthy. It's red, meaning he has all his life force back, you name it. So he's, he's actually at prime, right? You know? Um, regardless if you think that, or if you just think it's only because of Killer Beast Chakra, and therefore, like, that's why he can do all this shit now, or whatever, you know, you name it, which I think is a little weird, because he was already showing scaling to Sage Naruto, even while fatiguing him, and etc. And we know Sage Naruto is very similar to KCM Naruto in certain aspects, you name it, yada yada. So, overall, like, you know, however you deem it, bottom line is, we know bare minimum, Red Hair Nagato is superior, right? But, White Hair Nagato is relative. That's the thing. White Hair Nagato was also able to react to V2, was able to react to uh, KCM Naruto. Like, he was able to fight both of them at the same time, separate KCM Naruto, uh, speed blitz him with the Invisible Chameleon, deal with uh, Killer B. Like, he was reacting to all their shit. He even moved so fast that Naruto couldn't even sense where he was. Like, he, he dispersed the Madaratsu, got up, and was gone. And, and they were like, where the fuck is he? Where is he? He moved so quick. He speed blitzed their perception and sensory and got inside the invisible chameleon and then Shino Tensei cased him Naruto across the fucking forest just to have a 1v1 with a Killer B, right? And then has his 1v1, whatever. Killer B has to go to V2. Mind you, not base, but V2, okay? Which is very impressive because Killer B was fighting in base against Itachi, right? Which is, again, just shows more dominant performance with, with Nagato, okay? And he goes to V2, which we know is a power-up, right? Speed, strength, you name it. He goes, he runs, he tries to speed blitz Nagato with the Lariat, okay? Which is a speed blitzing technique. And Nagato is still able to use Jutsu Activization and absorb his Chakra. And still react to V2 uh, Killer B. So... But no matter what, bare minimum, all I'm trying to say is Nagato at least has relativity, right? He at least has relativity. Just putting that out there. That's it. And I'll also put this in the YouTube video as well. I forgot, my bad, guys. Because that, that was a good question he brought up. And that's also something to kind of think about, whatever. That's just me, though, generally. You could advocate against that, obviously, or argue against it. But that's just from based upon everything we've seen. Feats, you name it. That's my opinion between white hair Nagato and red hair, and that's just it, you know. And then it also think about it this way as well, uh, Fizzy Doc. White hair Nagato is all fucked up, like his body, like you can see his ribs and shit. Like he can't walk by himself. Like K Kakuzu fodder ass has to hold him and run. Atachi has to hold his shoulders and like, hey bro, you know I got your back. You know what I mean? Like he he's kind of fucked. <laughs> you know, it's blatantly implied he's like a vegetable in a way, but yet. He can still use Chakra and still be just dangerous. It's crazy to even KCM Naruto and Killer B, you know? And then if you correlate that to the Paths of Pains, you could just argue relativity. Because at the end of the day, Nagato is using his Chakra to control the Paths of Pains. It's still his power. Even if it's not Nagato, it's still his own Chakra that's channeling to the Paths of Pains. It's just that, that uh, dispersed into different portions, right? Um, and that's basically it. So meaning if you at least just argue relativity for the passive pain to Nagato, they would have a similar scaling in a sense too, right? We don't know definitively, but you could argue the higher possibility of shit, okay? Um, and that's basically what you have, you know? And that Nagato had red hair, meaning he had all the life force and, you know, you name it, yada, yada, yada. It's just his body was kind of fucked in a way too. But that Nagato could also be able to move. Like if he got out of his life support machine, he'd be able to move as well, you name it. He probably would die though. But we know he could at least move because we literally see Edo Nagato could do it, you know? So, that's all you have, you know what I mean? But, either way, um, I hope you enjoyed it. But, um, but that's it. But anyways, now Batman's gone. 
Bye. All right, so...